You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is the Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Change your mind, change your life. Your life is your choice, and you don't have to walk that path alone. Let Leah help you explore healing, inner peace, self love, and bring joy and wellness into your life. So now, please welcome the host of the Mind Health Coach, Leah Marie. Welcome to the Mind Health Coach Program. I'm Leah Marie, your host, and you're listening to a live broadcast here at the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The Mind Health Coach Program is aired every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure and tune into the show on Monday nights at 6 p.m. if you want to improve your life to learn more about me, Leah Marie, and the programs I offer. You can visit mindhealthcoach.com and you can also learn more about my eight weeks to a better brain using Muditations daily meditation program at muditations.com. And tonight I would like to address a topic of, um, you know, the way that we go through life and transitions that happen and occur, uh, everything from positive things to difficult things to uh, really traumatic things, it causes transition in our lives. And I've had plenty of that in my own life. And just aging, the aging process too, is um, something that it has us facing transition, the energy of transition when we're um, in a state of transition at any moment um, of our lives, it sometimes can be really difficult and we can't usually um, do it without some tools in place. We can't do it gracefully without some good tools in place that will help us manage those transitional moments. And so, um, you know, some of the things that I've used for my tools during transition have been, you know, the wonderful holistic stress management techniques that I share quite frequently. And I kind of want to dive into using that and then just perspective on life through using these tools um, when you're in transition. So what what is transition? What what does that even mean? What what kind of life transitions am I talking about? And it can be anything. It can be, you know, you're going off to college for the first time. You're, you know, first time you're leaving home and you're kind of nervous and, you know, you're, you're out in the big world and you're experiencing test anxiety and <laughs> all of those things. And, you, you know, you don't have the support of your, your home there with you because you're, you're in a different environment. You know, maybe you went away to college and you're in a different environment. I had my daughter go through that transition a few years back and, you know, it was, it was challenging for her. So she actually determined that it wasn't for her and she came back home. And, uh, you know, she wasn't ready to, to make that transition complete. So, you know, that's okay, too, if you realize that uh, something that you're trying to work towards of transitioning into different parts of your life, it, if you're not ready, then, you know, it, it takes time and maturity, obviously, to, to make a move like that. And, you know, other forms of transition may be a loss of a relationship. Um, you know, maybe your uh, best friend has decided that they don't want to be friends anymore. Or maybe you're, um, you're recovering from a breakup or possibly, you know, even divorce. You, you might have gotten to that extent with someone and been married for, for many years and, you know, then 
somebody in the relationship felt that it wasn't what they wanted anymore. And it can be harmful and hurtful to both parties if it's not done with uh, the focus of growth in mind. And so that's, you know, really important when you're transitioning out of uh, one state of being, which is like, you know, I'm this married person and I um, have this whole way that everybody perceives how I live and my whole perception of how I am going through life as a wife or a husband. And all of a sudden that identity is kind of, you know, taken and it's, 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 disrupted and it's almost like a house of cards everything comes falling down very easily and that can be really challenging unless you're working with um, certain tools and and working towards growing from the experience and you know I I'm a big believer that uh, everything happens for a reason I know that sounds very cliche but I am I'm truly a believer of that everything happens for a reason but I oftentimes wonder like what is the reason and and how do I grow from it you know what do I learn from this uh transitional moment what 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 can I take so I never have to experience this level of um transition again in this aspect of my life and you know sometimes um you know things just can't be helped with other parties when you're engaging with other parties and you're they have a different initiative in their lives and they have different needs and wants and desires and if they're growing in a different direction and they don't feel aligned with you they're not doing you any favors with your life if they stay with you so it's best to just let go and and move forward and and find your feet again but sometimes that can be almost debilitating. And unless we st- understand, um, you know, there's different points in the process where it's going to feel completely debilitating, that it's going to feel overwhelming, that it's going to be like, I don't see how there's any light at the end of the tunnel. I've spoken to many people that have used my coaching services and, you know, they feel like they're so stuck. And, you know, especially uh, it seems when the emotions are involved with uh, a very close relationship, they oftentimes are at a loss of how can anything be better? How can they overcome this horrible, traumatic grief that they feel from the loss? And they feel that, you know, that it's not going to be something they can overcome. And and then, you know, they work through the process. They get through the whole grief stages and they look back and they say, whoa, what, you know, what was I sweating it for a couple of years later? And and they're actually very happy that it did happen. I You know, I've had people that are, they feel blessed and me in, included, you know, I've been divorced Um for over 16 years and you know I I'm I feel very blessed that I learned from the transition of that relationship and have grown and uh, if I had stayed in that relationship I I probably I wouldn't be doing all the work that I'm doing today that's for sure and I wouldn't certainly be feeling as um, empowered and and loving who I am today as much. So I'm, I'm very happy and blessed that I went through that experience. Um, you know, and then there's of course, tragedies such as loss that are difficult to transition through, um, loss of a loved one or, you know, even loss of a job, loss of your home. There's a lot of stressful circumstances that we encounter on a day to day basis that, are very difficult. And I'm in the field of geriatric care, and I see a lot of families suffering with the loss of their loved ones that are transitioning into the last stages of life. And especially those folks that are experiencing, you know, the changes in the brain that are due to something um, such as Alzheimer's disease. It can be extremely difficult for a family member or a family unit to be experiencing the losses and changes in transition of that person that has Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, that's something that um, is really important that we understand when somebody is going through that those losses and transitioning like if you're if you're their support system and you know they're they're asking you for help and to lean on you 
if you're a true friend, don't walk away. Don't just say, okay, you know, they're just going through whatever and I don't really want their drama. Because I see that a lot in today's world. Like a lot of people are, aren't really compassionate and empathetic. They're so focused on their own stuff and they're just so self-absorbed and it's that's concerning. And, you know, then there's a lot of wonderful people out there. But if you, you know of somebody that's going through that kind of loss, um, you know, of their loved one that has Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, I... You you know, my heart goes out to anyone that's experiencing that because it is an extremely tragic way to um, see transition happen in your loved one. And, uh, you know, then, of course, there's just a typical loss of, um, you know, things that are perceived losses and there may they may not really be a loss. It's, uh, you know, it's a gain. And so that's what it's about. A lot of these different types of losses that we're talking about, of course, some of them are tragic and traumatic and but a lot of them can be transmuted into something beautiful for you and your growth. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about this transitional um, experience of and how to transmute the energy of transition in any circumstance to being something that helps you grow and helps your soul get elevated. We'll be right back. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. So we're back. I'm Leah Marie, your host for this hour on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. So before we went to break, I spoke about, you know, uh, different transitions that we experience in life. And, you know, we're, I, I kind of had a, a heart to heart talk with my daughter the other day because she's a biology major. And <laughs> she was telling me that, you know, there's nothing really beyond what we see, feel, touch. And, I, you know, I'm like, I think you're talking to the wrong person about this because I'm all about, you know, that there's so much more to this world than what we see, feel, touch. So, and, and she needs science to prove it. And, you know, I, started referencing different things like quantum physics and and that sort of thing. And, you know, I kind of said to her that, um, you know, it's really important that you realize that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. You know, it's, it's not the other way around. We're not humans having spiritual experiences. We are, but, you know, we really are, we're a human being, you know, and I kind of like, 
I, I pointed out we're being, we're being human and, you know, we're on this earth and we're playing out what our soul wants to experience for growth. And she didn't really say a whole lot, <laughs> but hopefully I'm helping her through a transition of um, being open to concepts that are not being taught on, uh, I guess, at her biology courses that she's taking at college, which I'm hoping they'll include, you know, some of these unbelievable discoveries that are happening with quantum physics and other other aspects of science. So eventually in her studies, um, so that she can really understand that there is more than you touch, feel, see, smell here. And, you know, a lot of people out there, I think, have that belief system. I myself, I am a big believer in that there's a lot more, um, as I already have said, that can that are energies that are working with us, that are energies that we're creating from our own thoughts, from our own, you know, focuses. When we're focused on something completely, there's miracles that can happen. There's also um, when you're focused on worry and, uh, you know, the fear, the fear energy of what will an outcome be, then, you know, you're going to, you're going to be, actually, you're going to be in, um, harming yourself because you're going to be putting things into your body. You're, you're going to be calling things into your body from your thought processes that will start to cause things like inflammation. And I've talked about this on this program many times, you know, so that can create a whole nother experience, right? So if you're totally focused on worry and, you know, stress and uh, negative thinking, then you're going to actually change your your whole structure of your body. You're going to activate DNA that may have not been activated if you stayed in a positive mindset. Um, DNA that could bring you harmful um, autoimmune disorders and, and that sort of thing. And inflammation is caused by cortisol. So when you're having stressful thoughts and negative thinking, cortisol is pumping through your body and it's causing inflammation. Cortisol is normally... Um, in small amounts, and it's very appropriate when we have a germ enter our body, and then cortisol will come in and, and like activate it, the inflammation process to get it out of our body. But when we're having chronic cortisol production, and we're not overcoming our fears and emotions that are associated with transition, and we're constantly calling in that cortisol and constantly getting inflammation, that's when diseases start happening, like um, heart disease and diabetes and Alzheimer's and many others, uh, like I mentioned, autoimmune disorders, lupus, that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I love to talk about our thoughts create our reality because it is true. We can, we can choose, um, to, to think in different ways and start to heal quicker when we know this, when we're empowered and know that my thoughts in this perspective are really affecting my health and well-being. And if I don't clear that negative thinking and move towards a more positive flow, then I I'm going to have more problems to worry about. So it's imperative when you're going through the transition process to honor the time and space that you're going through it um, to, you know, to go through the stages in a healthy way as possible. But it's also imperative that you transmute that energy quicker rather than later. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you have a huge loss like a divorce or, you know, loss of a, of a income, um, that it's not going to be stressful and you should just be all, uh, just throw it away and let it go and, and you'll be fine. I, I'm, I'm saying we need to honor that, but we've got to give it uh, an appropriate time and space to honor the change and transition and know that when we're dwelling and that's something that was really impactful to me at one point when I was going through my divorce many years ago. Um, my physician had said, you know, it's almost like you're dwelling now. And <laughs> he's like, you don't want to get to dwelling. And I totally agree. I understand that. I comprehend that at this point. And I comprehended it pretty quickly when he said it. When you're dwelling on something, you're focused on it. You're putting all your energy. You're giving away your life. Your, your whole life force is going to it. Your vitality is going to it. And do we really want to serve and, you know, uh, 
channel our energy that is so important and needed for our well-being, for what we do with our well-being and our vitality and our life force? Do we want to keep continuing to channel that energy into something that is no longer part of our lives? And, you know... I, I I know there's different circumstances, there's so many different circumstances, and there's so many different tragedies that happen to all of us. But when you look at it from that perspective, and we have such a short time that we're here having a human experience, a human being, um, having a spiritual experience, um, <laughs> or vice versa, a spiritual being having a human experience, it, it's such a short time that why would you want to just shorten that time and kind of throw out the vitality and all the wonderful things we're here to create, we're here to grow, we're here to expand. So it's really critical when you're in that state of transition, kind of managing it like this is a project. And I, I know that sounds a little bit cold. And, you know, maybe we can talk about that a little bit more in depth. We're going to be taking a short break. And uh, when I come back, we're going to we're going to talk about some different like strategies to kind of tackle any thoughts that are coming in, good ways to manage it, different perspectives to hold when you're going through transition to get those that, that done quicker. So we will be right back. Stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Mind Health Coach Program with Leah Marie on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before we went to break, I said about, um, you know, focusing on uh, different thought patterns that just keep inspiring your body to um, set you, you up to uh, keep producing cortisol. And if you keep focusing on negative thinking during transition, it can really arrange in your body a chronic condition of producing cortisol. And uh, it's imperative that you kind of get control of that and you you manage it. And so when you notice yourself um, going through life's transitions, like I mentioned, there could be uh, worry about money, there could be worry about your own self-preservation if you are facing some illnesses. And, uh, you know, I've experienced that just recently. Um, I, I don't know if I shared this story or not. Or not. I think I did when because I took some time off from the show for a little while where I had um, a hospitalization and I was actually hospitalized for, um, I had Lyme disease, I had spinal meningitis from the Lyme disease and I ended up with Bell's palsy too which, you know, would have affected my ability to do the show because I was slurring words. So I I just feel like 
so grateful, though, that I was able to overcome all of that. Um, you know, I had a good medical team. I had, um, you know, I, I had a little bit of a question about the neurologist because um, when he came in, he was uh, he was very much like uh, not really advising me that greatly on the Bell's palsy. He didn't have any answers. And I know it's hard to tell, but I was very concerned. Is this going to be, you know, the way that my face is? Because my whole left side of my face was uh, drooping and, you know, um, I couldn't even close my eye right and my mouth wasn't operating uh, normally and I couldn't smile. I couldn't eat properly for a while. Um, and I, I was just saying, well, how long is this going to be like this? Am I going to, you know, snap out of this? Is this something that uh, is long term or permanent? And he really couldn't give me any answers. He was basically just telling me that, you know, there's not a lot of um a lot of evidence with my condition of whether he could say, oh, it's going to be a week or, you know, whether it's going to be cleared up um, in six months or whether it could be permanent. That was basically his response to me. And, you know, that was really traumatic. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm not that old, I, you know, and now my face is totally changed. I'm having to pull my lip over to, <laughs> to even get a drink in my mouth of water. Um, you know, it, it was kind of a struggle. So, uh but then after about two and a half weeks, I started to have sensation back. It was a little painful and I was able to move things. And I'm completely fine with the Bell's palsy and also the other things like Lyme disease, ha disease had some residual effects on me. Um, but I, I'm just so grateful. And, um, you know, I really worked hard, I will tell you, to maintain a positive uh, outlook during that whole process. I just, um, you know, sometimes it was make believe, but I, I actually did so well at that, that I kind of made myself believe that all was okay. Um, and I just stayed focused on, you know, my spiritual uh, evolution and how this was going to impact me once I got through it. And that maybe my story of, of how I healed through the summer um, would help other people. So that's kind of what brought me to the, to today's, to today's show, you know, like I really um, felt like now was a good time to share because I've gotten a really good positive state of mind. Um, and, but I had to hold that and maintain it throughout the whole process. Or I knew that, and my doctor kept telling me too, that this is your shot. You know, we're going to give you all of the, um, antibiotics and, and that sort of thing, but this is your shot. You have to get enough rest, st stay stress-free. You have to focus on, you know, eating healthy and doing healthy activities for yourself and, you know, staying really in a good space. So I've done that. And, you know, that was back in June and now we're, um, headed towards November and I'm feeling great. I mean, I, people look at me when I tell them how, you know, much of a um, hard experience I had over the summer. And they're like, I don't even see any residual effects at all. Your face looks totally normal. And they're surprised. And I say, well, I'm not because I kept thinking positive and healing thoughts for myself. And, you know, instead of worry and doubt and uh, fear, I just focused on positive. And it was really, um, you know, it was a real good, good growth experience for me uh, spiritually and, um, you know, for my soul. And I'm really happy that I experienced all of that. I mean, I, of course, I don't want to put myself back in that position, but I feel like it empowered me to be able to talk about, um, you know, facing illness uh, once again, because I've had Lyme disease and Babesia before, and I've also had a near-death experience, but I just feel like these experiences that a lot of us experience, you know, most of humanity has very difficult challenges. There's not one person on the planet that hasn't had a challenge. So it's just the degrees that we all experience are different. And, you know, but when I've had to face these situations, three in particular, that were very, um, you know, challenging my mortality, I, I've gotten through them and with flying colors. And so I really feel um, that it's very empowering to know that the techniques that I'm using can be shared. And that's kind of where I'm coming from when I talk about 
how do you manage this? How do you manage these really difficult situations? And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we're, we're the, the uh, opposite. We're, we're all focused on negative things. We're, I've, as I said, I've worked with a lot of families that are seeing their loved ones transition and they're actually so stressed out about it. They're causing themselves illness that could potentially turn into what they're experiencing um, with their loved one that's that's transitioning into a disease process. And so I always am like, you've got to really take care of you. It's that, you know, if you're not taking care of you and uh, focusing on your health and well-being in a positive, healthy way, then how is anybody going to be overseeing the care of your loved one? You know, so it's imperative that we take care of ourselves first. And, and then, you know, we, we kind of have to filter out from there with um, where we want to focus our life force and our vitality. And that's really kind of what you've got to manage and work on and what those situations of transition are bringing to you are opportunities to ensure that you're looking in the right place to, to funnel your life force. So we'll be right back. We're taking a break. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. We're coming to you live tonight and every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. I am your host, Leah Marie, and tonight we are discussing how to, you know, move through transition gracefully, how to overcome uh, grief and despair and uh, stressful negative thoughts when you're going through a transition and how to um, implement different tools that will help you, you know, with that management of it quicker. And, you know, there's, there are a lot of the similar tools that I've talked about um, applying to different scenarios like meditation and, you know, emotional freedom technique is a huge one. I love emotional freedom technique. It's just, it's, it's so empowering to know that you can take that time for yourself and, you know, use this technique that that wakes up your energy centers and touches upon different acupuncture points without sticking needle in yourself. (laughs) And, um, you know, just the deep breathing and the affirm, the affirmations, it's kind of like the whole package put together and, uh, you're, you're channeling your energy into releasing any negative or, um, disheartening or saddening, like anything that's not, comfortable that's associated with an emotion. So if you've got anxiety or you have frustration or you have a lot of sadness or you have, you know, a lot of fear about a certain situation, 
emotional freedom technique, tapping on different acupuncture points is amazing and is so, so helpful. And, um, you know, I don't have any videos up on my website, but I do have a video online somewhere. (laughs) And so if you want to email me, um, my, my email is info at mindhealthcoach.com and I can forward you. I have a whole video on EFT and tapping and different applications for it. So I think it's most, uh, productive to kind of learn about EFT instead of just listening to me talk or reading a book. It's good to do, um, an actual session with somebody that's going to guide you through, uh, you know, and I do that a lot with my clients. I do a lot of coaching on EFT processes because sometimes we think we're doing it right and you're not really getting the full effects of it. And it's good to have somebody helping you tweak, um, you know, where you're kind of going wrong in the process so that you can, you can experience the, the magnitude of healing. And I, you know, like I used EFT for many years for different things that I was dealing with. And I, you know, I've always found it such an effective tool. Sometimes I've, you know, I will admit there's been times where like, I just don't feel like doing it. I'm not doing EFT for this situation. It's going to change on its own and I'll get real stubborn about it. And, you know, most of the time I'll break down and I'll do it. And I always think that it's really wonderful to keep a journal too. I think it's important to know what your triggers were for whatever that emotion was and where you stood at that time. So like on a scale of one to 10, when you're feeling a certain emotion, what are you, where are you at? And if you're doing an EFT sequence about three times, it brings that emotion down. It actually helps you be able to manage it very quickly. So that's something that is really great. Um, in helping you manage any emotions that are associated with, oh, I've got to walk in this place. And I know that somebody that, you know, is causing me a lot of stress is going to be there. And I, you know, I just feel sick every time I do it. I'm going to, I'm going to try to look at things differently though. I'm going to do a sequence, um, three times of EFT and I'm going to write in my journal how I feel and be very present. And, you know, that's a, that's a tool. That's a way to manage it. Um, another way to, you know, bring down your anxiety, stress, sadness, anything is breathing. There's a lot that is connected between the space between our emotions and our breathing. And um, it has a lot to do with our nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system that we can initiate and call to action just by using certain breathing techniques. So I'm a big fan of alternate nostril breathing. And it's really great because it helps It helps actually um, shift the energy from the right and the left side of the brain. So you're using your logical and your your, uh, creative side as you're breathing, and it's waking up both sides of the brain. And it's also um, cleansing your lungs. You're having to work at your breath. You're focused. It's very intentional. And, you know, there's lots of videos. A lot of yoga teachers do alternate nostril breathing. And it it automatically brings relaxation through your body. It's um, So these are different techniques that if you are unable to just change your thought about something, you can implement this tool and it will shift the energy in your body, it'll start, uh, you know, shifting the way you're feeling on a physical, uh, you know, physiological level. It's not just, um, you know, I change my mind, and then I have this experience. That's part of it, too. But this, if you feel like you cannot get out of the thoughts that you're having, and you need to have some feel good happening, EFT and uh, alternate nostril breathing are wonderful tools to implement. Um, Another great tool to use is I I love this line that doTERRA came out with last year. You can see it on my website, um, mindhealthcoach.com. You go there and you can look at, I have this line of um, emotional aromatherapy. It's really great. It's uh, blends. They're already blended for you. And they have been studied, you know, having scientific studies show that in some situations, that some of them are more effective than others for different conditions. So there's one called forgive that comes out on top and it really helps lower grief and uh, sadness and 
angry feelings. So it's, you know, I have it and I have it with me a lot (laughs) so that if I'm experiencing any stress or any feelings that I think, okay, you know what, I have to shift this thinking. I need some tools, but I don't want to be sitting here pushing my nostrils and I don't want to be tapping on my face and, you know, in front of whomever I'm with and I'll pull out my little roll on and I'll just like roll it on my wrist and I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll take um, a deep inhale and just, you know, experience that. And the essential oils, they will communicate with your brain and connect different things in your brain that will allow you to experience um, the relief from that. I mean, I've, I've used it in the company I work for. We, uh, our signature oil is orange essential oil because it helps with rejuvenation and also lowering anxiety. So, uh, you know, there are anxious situations that are happening for, for our patients that are going through a transition, um, you know, meaning either their disease process is increasing or, you know, they're just having fear and anxiety about it increasing. So that oil is really helpful to a lot of people because it's, made from oranges it's derived from orange peels so a lot of you know unless you're allergic to oranges it's it's you know something that's very safe and natural to use um and there's many others so if you ever want to you know learn more about essential oils get in contact with me my email is info at mind health coach and if you have any questions you can you know get online too and go to my website you can book a coaching session with me by visiting mindhealthcoach.com or shoot me an email at info at mind healthcoach.com and we will be right back we're coming right back in just a moment certified professional coach pamela reeves can help you with your relationships motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life her book is it love or merely a sick attachment helps readers clearly distinguish healthy loving relationships from toxic ones miss reeves has put her words into action through ray of hope kenya an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse miss reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful happy. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. 
We're back on the Mind Health Coach Program with Leah Marie on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And tonight we're discussing how to handle transition, how um, we can use different tools that will help us through transition. And, you know, I've shared a couple so far. I've talked about EFT. I've talked about, um, you know, things that are quick fixes. So like uh, stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system by using alternate nostril breathing, which, you know, you can Google and find out about how to do that um, or attend a yoga class. A lot of times they'll do that at the end. And, um, you know, also there's different essential oils that can really be very helpful and, you know, incredibly resourceful for people to tap into, um, you know, because it's it's something that that's contained in the essential oils that uh, activates our different areas of our brain. And, you know, there's different, um, er, there's different areas sometimes stimula- stimulated by different oils. So like I was sharing, orange essential oil is great for rejuvenation. So like I always recommend it to caregivers that are feeling really burnt out, both family and, you know, professional caregivers. If you're feeling really burnt out just take a couple um, drops of essential oil orange essential oil in the palm of your hand and then rub your hands together and place them like cup them over your face and inhale for a couple seconds and it instantly will help you with um, rejuvenating and then also um, lowering your anxiety at the same time and another essential oil that's great a, a lot of people know about is lavender oil that's really always helpful as well and you know there's some interesting ones that have different uh blends if you blend different oils together then you can actually come out with this result that will help you with a lot of different emotions so as i mentioned that's on my website i have some of these blends that are really wonderful on my website so if you email me you wanted some you just have to let me know. But um, and also, if you want a consult to talk about what would be good for your emotions, what would be good to help you overcome certain things, you know, um, there's just so many different applications for essential oil. I do, I try to stay away from the consumption of it. I'm not a big believer in that, um, but I am, you know, I'm okay with putting it on your skin as long as it's a, uh, approved to do so or uh, taking aromatically, I think is really great too. Um, but then, you know, there's some longer term solution tools that you can look at as well. And that, one of them is meditation and I'm always all about meditating on a daily basis because it's so important for our brain health and, you know, it helps, uh, to actually restructure neural pathways in our brain. So if we're having these negative thoughts and we're focusing in a, in a meditative state, which puts your brain at a different frequency at a different, like your, your brain waves are at a different frequency when you're meditating, you're kind of like, um, you're not quite asleep, but you're not quite awake and you know it does take a little uh focus and discipline to maintain that state of being and it's so easy to slip out of it and uh it's so easy to slip off to sleep if you get too comfortable and that will change your brainwave state or you can allow yourself to be like put into a flurry of worry and you know what ifs and all different other thoughts that aren't going to achieve what you're trying to do, which is, um, you know, grow your neural pathways to accept different messages and, and perceive the world differently than you have been. And when you're thinking on a subject and you want, you know, to achieve different results, like you keep thinking about a subject that brings you a lot of stress and you really, you know, you know that you're kind of blowing it up and making it more than it is. Um, and you know that you really want to change this pattern in you, then it's great to kind of like go through the process of what, what is bringing you to these, you know, thoughts? What, how do you get there? And then do some EFT, um, on each triggering, 
thought that you've got, uh, each triggering circumstance, it brings you the certain thought that you've got. And then, um, you know, then bring in the meditation piece. And it really kind of connects well. And it, it, if you need to aid yourself with these other tools, such as the alternate nostril breathing and the um, aromatherapy, bringing all of it together can be really quite powerful. And I love to um, have fun with this, you know, like it's, it's nothing um, that, you know, I know if you're, you're dealing with uh, transitions such as death or loss of a loved one, it's not easy to have, you know, fun thoughts about anything. I've gone through that myself, losing my mother two years ago. And, you know, but now I kind of um, tap into her when I'm meditating. So I feel like I'm connecting with her. I will open up to the energy of communication with her when I meditate. And it's interesting what I've received. And, you know, the experiences that I have had over the course of the two years have been beautiful, wonderful experiences. And, you know, there's some even some great cards I've um, done with a grief group uh, before uh, the by Doreen Virtue. Um, I forget the name of it, but I think it's uh, like heaven is communicating with you, messages from heaven or something like that. And just like allowing yourself to shuffle a deck and um, have a card fall out or, um, you know, if you're, you're kind of uh, you want you want to take more control and you pull a card from the deck and seeing what the meaning is and how it relates to your experience with the passing of that person and and maybe what they're trying to communicate to you through the you know the cards the oracle um, that you're working with and you know that can be inspiring on so many levels and some people may say well I don't want to touch that but sometimes it may open up a thought to you that you have never even um, um, wouldn't even have yourself, you know, you wouldn't have experienced that uh, inspiration or that perception if you had not opened yourself up and allowed yourself to use a tool like an, like an Oracle card or something of that nature. So it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, I also when I've gone through transition and loss, I have some wonderful books that I turn to and I'll kind of leaf through them. I love, love, uh, daily meditations by, um, I think it's, I can't remember the author's name. I'm sorry, but it, it, daily meditations, um, using a course in miracles. And, uh, I've used that quite frequently and, it's really, really powerful when you open up a book and it's speaking right to you about your circumstance. It's it's like the book knew that you needed this advice. It needed you needed this connection to kind of put things at peace and you know reaffirm where you're at and and move forward. So we're gonna take one more break. Before we come back, um, listen to the break, and we will be talking, wrapping up the show. So we'll be right back. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from 
Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back to the Mind Health Coach Program. It's Leah Marie, your host, and we're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And, you know, I just want to thank everyone so much for listening listening to my show. I um, really appreciate the listeners, and I love getting feedback. So anytime that you want to connect with me, you can go right to my website, mindhealthcoach.com, um, or you can email me directly at info at mindhealthcoach.com. You can schedule, um, you know, sessions on the, the website as well. Um, you know, just to reiterate, there's so many different transitions that we have in life and you know there's no way to explain everyone's experience with each individual um you know potential transition that we have because we're all different we all have a totally different life and you know we're we're different looking we're different in the way we think so you know, the things that I present are, um, you know, really great natural ways to handle your, uh, your going through transition, you know, periods of transition in your life. Um, you know, some of it might be right for you. Some of it may not be right for you. Some of it you may need to learn more about before you take it on, um, you know, to, to attempt to try it. But I do know that, you know, a lot of people have used these different techniques and found that um, it made a huge difference. And I'm actually one of them, too. I, you know, like I I talk about my fun little things that I do, like, um, you know, I might go to the beach and just really tune into the energy of the ocean and be, be be very present with what's going on and you know if I see like a bird fly by or you know or, or if I'm in uh, the woods and I see a certain animal cross my path and um, you know that might inspire me to look up a message about totems animal totems and it helps me when I'm in a period of transition transition to kind of like you know take the message take the teachings of what's being presented to us in our our experience here on earth. And, you know, that's what I'm just trying to inspire everyone in, into looking at different things and techniques to help, help achieve and overcome different challenges. So I'm really, really grateful to have this space and time to, to do that. And so I thank everybody for listening tonight and I hope you tune in to my show next week. Remember, visit mindhealthcoach.com. Feel free to email me at info at mindhealthcoach.com if you have any questions. And uh, I will be seeing you next week here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Have a great night. You've been listening to the Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Tune in each week so you can experience contentment and a feeling of well-being on all levels of existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual on the Mind Health Coach Show with your host, Leah Marie. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.